Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode. Super excited about this week's song. This is going to be time to break out the double neck, play some 12 string blues, some interesting things with slide and open tunings and six string leads and all that greatness that's on Led Zeppelin's Traveling Riverside Blues. So we're going to learn this in a couple sections. First section is going to be the intro and verse. Second section is going to be the solo. And the third section is going to be the, the outro. So those three components, we'll work through each one of those. And with that, you'll be able to build the song and you'll be able to play it like the record. All right, let's do this. So let's check out the intro first. Here we go. Awesome. So let's talk about that section. So first of all, um, the tuning. So this is done in almost an open G tuning. It's it's open G, but uh, it's actually a little flatter than G, a little sharper than F sharp, somewhere in between a little bit. So it makes me think that there might be some very speed tape slowing down, perhaps going on. Um, but anyway, um, so I'm if you're playing that to the record. Here's the notes. Six string is low D, but it's a little flatter than that, so whatever that is. G-ish, another D, another G, another B, and D. So that's your open G tuning. A lot of greatness you can do with slides there. Um, Jimmy Page used that a lot throughout Led Zeppelin. And we're going to be doing a number of those songs, too, in this open tuning. But like I said, if you're playing with others, just tune it to open G with those notes. Like the record, it's a little flatter, so you just find those notes um, to be able to play along with the song. I've got this set on the neck pickup. Um, and uh, I've got a little bit of dirt, not much, but a little bit of dirt um, on the amp sound. And I've got the treble and mid-range sort of cranked up a little bit on that. Um, okay, the other thing, you're playing with your fingers. So you can hear a lot of the, that kind of sort of finger picking going on. It's way too hard to do that accurately with a pick. I don't think he's using a pick on that. So I think it's a tribute to Delta Blues who are playing with the slide and they're playing with their fingers typically. But it's a little more interesting playing on a 12 string on that. So, okay, so the intro. You're starting up on the 12th fret. Remember when you're sliding, you're going to bring it up to the actual fret line. You're not going to play like you do with your fingers where you're in between. You're going to bring it right up to the edge to be in pitch. So when I'm doing the sort of picking, you'll see me sort of flicking my index finger down. That's how I do it. I'm sort of doing this. Um, so the way he does that, if you want to do it exactly like you're hearing it, he does it three times. And then he goes into a faster double time sort of strum. So it's three times with the first. Double time. And he does that eight times when he goes to the double. And 
And then it's a walk down. How I like to do it is because um, then he starts doing the finger picking. So you're already up here. <laughs> So, <clears throat> you can play that down here. But I, I think it's too much of a jump to go down. So make it easy on yourself. It's 10, and you're walking down on the A string. And you're just... The pattern that I'm doing is root, and then the thumb, index, and middle. So that's the pattern I'm using. So you're walking down on the A string. All of your other strings are able to ring out. Even if you sort of miss on those, it works because all, all these strings are tuned to open G and you're playing in G on this note. And you end there. So that's the intro. <clears throat> then you're sliding up. Now you're back to your slide. Hit it hard. Get a little bit of vibrato on there on 12. Then you're jumping between three and five, and you're hitting, you're mainly hitting the last, or the first three strings. Maybe catching the fourth, maybe catching the fifth every once in a while. So. Those are the fret positions. And then you're gonna do your walk down, now your hands down here. So I'm playing that off of the starting on the third fret D. Dum, 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 dum. And then you're doing the other strings after that. And then you repeat. that every time you're going up to 12. I'm using my index. Alright, so then it transitions into the singing parts of the verse. And this is great. Um, and Jimmy Page says this on a number of different songs um, as well. But So that's your open G. So what he's pl playing here is pretty simple. He's He's putting our index finger on the third fret B string. Um, I put my slide on my ring finger. Um, so if you do slide on ring or your pinky, or some people do it on their middle finger, um, your fret positions are gonna be again, index on three, five, six, and then back to five, back to three, and then you're gonna you're gonna bar both of those on three, right? So the sort of groove is right? very cool groove. Um, I mean, that note is the same as that note, so you could also do. But I learned it this way. We're going to carry that shape up to the C, which is now on our fifth fret bar. And then same thing, you're going to get your pinky up here three notes or three frets higher. And you can play around with that a couple different ways. You can put your pinky on the first string, three frets up, that's on the eighth fret. And then sort of go back and forth between seven and eight. Or you can actually do both strings. Pretty cool sound. He does that on uh, Physical Graffiti. 
Right? So there's a couple places where he does that. <clears throat> Back to G. Same position you're playing around with. And then close that out. G. Chromatic walk down from three on your D string down all the way. And do a slide up for the turnaround. So we're at D. The D chord is your turnaround for that one, four, five blues. So you could, I don't think he does that on the record, but, but that's the idea. Just get that note. And then you're back again. So one time all the way through. section. Now let's check out the solo section. solo section um, the 12 string is doing the same thing that we just learned on the on the verse where he's I'm now in standard tuning on this guitar so it's a little different but they're running through that part of the verse is what you're going to be playing the guitar solo over so <clears throat> standard tuning um, and to my ear it might be a Les Paul. This was recorded in um, early Zeppelin. So this is like, I think it was June 20 something of 69. So that's when they're on their US tour. Um, they're in the middle of their first US tour, I believe. Um, or not US tour, world tour. Um, mm -hmm. The song was recorded at BBC Studios, I believe. Um, but there, it's in between Led Zeppelin one and Led Zeppelin two, and in between that somewhere, I don't know when the date was, um, Jimmy Page got his Les Paul standard from Joe Walsh, um, and I don't know if he's playing that particular guitar or if he's playing his black Les Paul custom, which he already had. But to my ear, it sounds more like a Les Paul even though he was playing a lot of Telecaster on that, um, at that time frame live. So I'm going to go with the last ball. Um, you let me know if you know differently or documentation exactly what guitar it is. But when they did the recording, he recorded the 12 string. Um, and then um, after that, he uh, overdubbed the lead guitar. So on the recording, they recorded the live track with the 12 string, with all the rhythm parts. And then he overdubbed the lead guitar following that um, with, I think, one of his Les Pauls. And um, I don't know if he did that right away or if that came later. Those sort of things happened a lot then. Um, but to my ear, it's it's a Les Paul. And um, 
example of just a, a great ripping solo and um, everything you want out of a sort of hard rock, classic rock blues. It's got all the elements of Jimmy Page in there that you like, you know, very tasty little parts, um, stuff that sounds sort of sloppy um, and not perfect, which is great. Um, so, all right, so this solo. So <clears throat> the interesting thing to my ear is trying to pick where exactly he's doing this. Um, because you can kind of hear from the from the strings. You can play it from a, a number of different positions. Um, but I think it's fun trying to trying to figure out what the actual position was that he was doing it. Um, so he's starting off in major pentatonic G. Um, but to my ear, it sounds a little more, which that tends to be a lot of time. That, that's a lot of, that's a position that he plays that sort of major pentatonic from a lot. But um, it sounds a little more twangy when I'm hearing the record. So I think he's playing it there. I'm really digging in on that. So um, I think it's a middle position. Uh, so he's starting off on <clears throat> B string on eight. So your major pentatonic bend, you know, it's that part, it's that scale. So those are all between B string and, and E string uh, in between eight, nine, and 10. Um, and um, he's, to my ear, he is not playing that bend every time the same. Right? Like sometimes it's bending it just a little more because it's giving a little more emotion to it because it's it's sort of like talking or singing. Does it again. So it's a little different on the second time around. So he's doing that climb. And then he's going to bend up to the B flat because the chords are moving from G to C and it's a C dominant seven. So you're trying to get to the, trying to get to that seventh. Now what a lot of folks do and what you may find yourself doing is because you're in that position, um, you're, you find yourself bending up one fret. But to my ear, I think he's starting two frets down. Really trying to get that up there. And then he finishes it off by the C in that position. So your C, B flat. Again, that's where the chord is. And it's a little quiet. Moving down, now you throw it down to your bridge pickup and you're just gonna rip a super speed G minor pentatonic run. Right? So, <clears throat> I haven't got it note for note, but. The important part is to sort of hit that and then you sort of move around, do your speed. I don't think he goes much below. I think he sticks it in between the first, second, third, and fourth string. So he doesn't go all the way down here on this particular one. And then you end on that big bend. Hit your G. Bend back. So you're taking it from that minor and you're ending on the major. You make it a major note by hitting your major third, the B. I get that little D in there. I can't recall if, if he does that, but it sounds like it to my ear. Okay, so now chords are switching to D. That's all major pentatonic D. This is your D position. Right, your 
second position, uh, whatever that is, your D major pentatonic at that position here. So you're starting with your D note. I can't tell if he does that note or that note. That sounds a little too happy, so I think he does. Either one will work. Um, and then you're switching down to the C chord. And notice those positions are, you're playing the part of that C chord. When you're playing that D pentatonic run, look how you are, you're already in that, which is your C, which is part of your C chord. So you're sort of right there in that position. C. does is he bends all the way up to there because now you're C major pentatonic that is just taking it from up here and you're uh, on your C major slash minor pentatonic um, and he's mixing them both um, and just sort of walking down the scale here with C So your notes are nine on the uh, G string, eight on the B, ten on the B. No, skip that. So that's your position. You're like nine, eight, ten on the. E string, and then you just chromatically walk it down. Now to your seventh. So slow that down on YouTube, and you can pick each one of those. But it's he's just walking down the C chord. Great little phrase. And then you close it off with your G minor pentatonic rip and run. This time he goes all the way down um, and then climbs all the way back up again to end with the big bend. So. So I totally choked that, but you get the idea. You're just doing a G minor pentatonic run as fast as you want to do it. Um, and you're taking it all the way from this first position. Go all the way down to the F. Just however you want to do it. Climb back up. And end with your big shaky uh, bend, right? So. Yeah, that was sloppy, but you get the idea. So that's the solo section. <laughs> So let's talk about the outro now. Um, again, the chords, uh, the 12 string is doing the, the big slide. It's doing that part um, over and over again. Um, and the overdub lead outro part, again, I believe is his last Paul. I think he's starting it on um, the neck pickup. And the first one is great. It just sounds like, just sounds like he's listening to the take, and he's just sort of jamming along with it. It's not even, 
you know, an, an overstated part where he's playing it that loud, but he just does this little noodle. Very tasty. Um, and um, tone rolled off a little bit. I've got around six or seven now. Um, so to my ear, I think he's playing it up on that um, 12, above the 12, between 12 and 14, the major pentatonic on G. He's doing that. Um, the next part, he's sliding up to G minor pentatonic. So the big bend from 18 uh, on the B string up to 15. Um, 12, 13, 14, 15, yeah, 15 on the E string. Or oh, he's hitting that note anyway. He's actually not playing the E string, but he bends it up to that note. So it's similar to that walk down C pentatonic that we did earlier in the solo. Um, he's bending up to the note. string switch over to your G string so it's all minor 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 until he makes it major at the very end which is just a great way to finish off that little any little phrase that you do like that all right and then um, he does this fast little run and again you can do it a couple different positions if you're up here on this one you could play this run here. Or you could play it here on your B string, which is out of the, the G minor pentatonic positions here. Or you can play it all the way down here on your E string. And I don't know why, but that sounds right to me when I was talking earlier about trying to figure out which string position he's doing it at. That one sounds more like the record to me, so this is where I go. So you're just doing that little flare, and I'll describe it from this position. You're on the B flat, uh, which is a sixth fret on E string, and you're up here on seven, eight, nine. And eight, you're playing in between those three. And then there's your G note on the B string here at uh, eight. That little picking phrase that you hear there, da 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 all over Jimmy Page solos, all over the place. He loves that phrase. But again, ending it on the major. So it's another way to do, similar, he did this. Minor, 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 major. Minor, 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 major. Great way to end that little phrase. And then the last thing, hit your bridge pickup and do your big pentatonic two string double stop bend. So you're on your uh, G minor pentatonic, um, fifth fret G string, lock your pinky down on sixth fret B string, and just bend up two strings on the G. See if you can get a little wiggle on there too. Right? So all together. the outro all right thanks for tuning in everybody hope you enjoyed this and hope you learned a little bit um and i hope you pardon my slop <laughs> during all of this um give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already we bring content every single week ring the bell and you'll be notified every time we do that let me know in the comments what you thought about this and let me know what song you'd like to hear i'm looking for ideas on upcoming episodes so i would love to hear what are songs you'd like to see broken down on this channel all right until next time, everybody, take care.